Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good morning, good night, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Aidan Walker. I'm a program director of the Design China Beijing Forum. Wishing I could be in Beijing with you, but uh, here I am on the south coast of England in my country home in Sussex, introducing a whole range of really, really outstanding, excellent international speakers who, like me, are also with you on video. Uh, it's my great pleasure right now to introduce Mark Dytham of Klein Dytham. How about this? A German and an Englishman uh, make a partnership in an architecture practice based in Japan and they do work all over the world including really quite a lot of projects in China. The title of Mark's talk is Social and Iconic Architecture. Um, he's done some very, very wonderful things, things about standing beauty. I particularly like you to look at uh, the wedding chapel that uh, he and his partner Astrid have designed, which people now come from all over the world to be married in. And there's an associated kind of party room, which they've managed through uh, expert use of uh, interesting materials, notably stainless steel, to make kind of disappear into the into the forest. Um, the other thing that Klein Dytham are known about throughout the world is what I have been calling Pecha Kucha, but which I understand is actually pronounced Pechacha, which is the um, 20 slides, 20 second format. And he explains why um, they invented that, because architects basically go on too long. Uh, that's why they invented this thing. It's now a global phenomenon. Pechacha is now working in 1,235 cities around the world. And uh, the last section of, of Mark's talk is in itself a pachacha. So, ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy Mark Dytham. Hi, Beijing, Tokyo calling. I'm Mark Dytham. I'm one of the architects in Klein Dytham Architecture, and we're based uh, over here in Japan. It's really great to be speaking to you, especially because we're one of the founders of Tokyo, uh, design art, and that'll be kicking off uh, the end of uh, October, all being well. Anyway, I'm going to talk a little bit about our work and tell you what we get up to here in Japan and um, a few big ideas. Um, the main idea is about being social. Architecture is not just about design, it's about the social element, and that's becoming more and more important as we go forward. I also want to talk a little bit about well-being because well-being is becoming really important, not only um, in the home, but also in the workplace. And um, it's uh, a big idea. And I think we touch on it quite a lot uh, during our work. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, share my screen and um, go through a little bit of my work. Okay. So as I said, my name is Mark Dytham. And um, yeah, I've run Klein Dytham Architecture here in Tokyo with Astrid Klein. We met at the Royal College of Art in Tokyo, and uh, we both won scholarships out to Japan. And we worked for Toyo Ito for a few years before we set up on our own. And um, we're based in the heart of Tokyo in Shibuya. So the first project I wanna talk about is about the Leaf Chapel. And it's a really iconic project. And I think iconic buildings are really important and I think buildings which just have one idea are very, very important too. I think that the idea is the overwhelming point of the project. And this project is about a wedding chapel. And the wedding chapel in Japan, religion, there's three religions, there's Buddhism, um, Shinto, Christianity. And so this chapel really is a chapel without any cross or any religion. And we've built the idea, the big idea, the iconic idea around the notion of the wedding veil. And when the groom picks up the veil for the kiss, this huge 11 ton veil sweeps open. It's really dramatic and it's really iconic. And everybody remembers weddings which take place here. So this veil, as we say, it's 11 tons, it's, it's six millimeter, uh, steel. It's perforated with 4,500 acrylic lenses and there is a scrim, uh, like a neck curtain, 30 centimeters away from it, which makes it feel like a piece of lace that's being lifted up. Um, it is really beautiful. As you can see here, the light coming through um, the steel, the, the holes in the acrylic, or this, the holes in the steel with the acrylic lenses and they project these almost wedding ring-like projections onto the scrim, making it feel like a piece of lace. 
So it's a really enjoyable building and it's incredibly dramatic. So as the veil opens, the, uh, the priest blesses the couple, they walk across the stepping stones and have a champagne toast on the grass. And then the veil closes and resets for the next wedding. There's about eight weddings a day happen here on a lucky day. So it's really a one way wedding machine. The night weddings are really popular too, as you can imagine. It is really spectacular. But again, this notion of a building being iconic is important. This building is now 15 years old and it's still being advertised as a place to go and get married. People fly from all around the world uh, to get married here. So what happens after you've got married in the wedding chapel? Well, because it became so popular, um, there weren't enough buildings in the hotel, it's built in the grounds of a hotel, where people could um, have an after party. So, um, yes, as, as I say, there are eight weddings. We need a lot of after party areas. So we built Brillare, and this is a 50-person party room where you come after the wedding. This hotel is located in the southern Alps of Japan. Um, and it's in a beautiful setting, a, a beautiful fo forest. And this building is attached to the hotel, but pushes out into the forest. And we didn't really want it to be a building. We didn't really want the building to be there. So we've covered it in polished stainless steel, which dematerializes this, the volume of the building and uh, really makes it disappear um, into the scenery. Inside, um, you know, really gorgeous views out. And then this amazing table, which gets bigger towards the end where the bride and groom sit. And again, it's iconic in many, many ways. And especially at night too, um, as the parties tend to drag on into the evening. I shouldn't say drag on, but anyway, as they go into the evening, it really becomes this beautiful Mesian glass box, which floats in the, in, in, in the forest and the countryside of, of Japan. Truly iconic, and I think if you have your wedding here, you'll remember it for your rest, the rest of your life in many, many ways. So um, that's our projects there. Again, about being connected and about being social, uh, Ginza Place is in the heart of Tokyo. It's the epicenter of shopping in Japan. It's on the major crossroads. This building is on the most important corner uh, in Japan, and you can see uh, the building here. The building is a mixed use building, but it's on a very difficult corner. It's north facing. And here we wanted to, the building to connect, be social with the environment around it. So many buildings in Ginza have no windows and no connection with the street. And we thought it was incredibly important to do that. And also have a connection to the existing architecture. Across the road, diagonally opposite, is the Waco building which was built in 1924 after the great uh, um, earthquake and fire which destroyed Tokyo. The Wako building was built. This is where Seiko watches started. And we wanted the building to line through uh, the entablature and the scale of the buildings to talk to one another and be connected. So the building is, is split into three elements, small, medium, and large, and they increase as, as you go up. And we wanted the building to turn the corner in a really beautiful way, but it's a 45 degree corner. It's really blunt. So we've used these patterns uh, to allow the building to turn uh, the corner. The scale of the building is really important too. We wanted to connect, have a human scale at ground floor. And you can see here, the panels are really small and detailed and perfectly crafted, like anything you'd find in Ginza. So we wanted that connection to craft. Um, but as they go up the building, they stretch and become bigger and bigger. The project is for Sapporo, for Sapporo Beer, and um, they've owned the site for 101 years. And we really saw the, almost like the bubble in the glass of, glass of beer, it grows as it gets towards the top, and you'll see that in, in a second. Um, the building's function is a series of showrooms. It's a showroom for Nissan on the ground, on the upper floor. And then above that, we have uh, a global showroom for Sony. Uh, but again, this connection with people to the street, seeing people in the building was really important, this social element. And here you can see how the panels get uh, uh, are very small, like a very small bubble at the bottom. And as they rise to the top of the Sapporo glass, they get bigger and bigger. And at the top, 
uh, there's a very fantastic restaurant with amazing views across Ginza. And in the slots too, we've got restaurants and um, ca cafes which look out uh, across towards the Seiko clock. We have our own clock here, and that uh, floats. Uh, that's an LED clock which floats. It's embedded into the glass. So, um, yeah, that's Ginza Place. We hope you can come to Tokyo uh, soon and experience the building. What we're most famous for, uh, probably, is uh, Daikin Yama Tea Site. And it's all about being social. And it's one of the first bookstores, if not the first bookstore, which started the bookstore trend, which I think you all know very well in China. Uh, Sutaya is a, uh, a large conglomerate. Uh, it's, a, it, it's a culture. Well, the company is called Culture Convenience Club. And they also have a, a, a membership card called T, T Point Card which is a loyalty card. And this is the logo that's ubiquitous across Japan. So when we were designing this project, it was a competition. There were 77 people invited. We felt that T card, the T point for the Tsutaya bookstore was one of those iconic things which, which should be a part of the facade. It was a way to advertise the company uh, in a very, uh, a very bold but subtle way. Here you can see the T's behind um, the, the fantastic greenery in this very upmarket area of Tokyo. Um, so you can see the T's, but you can't see the T's. So um, it's got this twist and that twist you'll see quite often in, in, in our work. This play with scale. Uh, you can see here, the actual building is a large T shape, uh, yet it's, in, it's made up of very small T's. So most people only see the small T's, but there's this big, bold, um, gesture of the big T's, three big T's. It was actually called Tea Garden in our competition. Uh, it became known as Tea Site in the end. So it's a bookstore, a 6,000 square meter bookstore. And one of the key things that we came up was, with was this idea of a magazine street, which connected the three buildings. Um, instead of putting books in one building, music in another building, and film in another building, we put, we put all the books on the ground floor and we connected through with ma Magazine Street. Now, when you find the magazines on uh, fashion, do you know what? That's where the books are on fashion. When you find the magazines on cars, that's where the car books are. So it was a way to navigate uh, the bookstore in a very simple and elegant way. Again, with Magazine Street, magazines change all the time. So there's a constant renewal of um, things on Magazine Street. So if you go there often, you're always going to find something uh, new. The building has a lot of glass in it, and we think that's important to allow light in and people to actually see out. But we don't want people to put things against the window. So we've got this bench which runs along there, and you can only put uh, uh, bookcases and lights and seats that we've designed on that, on that case. So we managed to control how the bookstore looks or that open area of glass. Uh, but it's a really lovely place to sit and relax and pause, and we're always thinking about human scale. We're always thinking about well, well-being. It's really, really important. And within the central building, you've got this fantastic uh, lounge, engine lounge, where uh, magazines uh, from all around the world are kept and archived. Uh, you can't take any, you can't buy the magazines here. You can only read them within the store. And obviously, we've made the book bar from books. <laughs> so um, that's a, you know that's a very nice joke. Uh, but again, it's very elegant. We have tables made of stacked books. Um, and it's a real special place to go, uh, a, real, a really fantastic place to pause and um, think about things. Yeah. Again, this was designed at the time that the iPad came out and everybody thought books were dead. But books are here to stay and uh, it's an incredibly popular uh, location in Tokyo. It's always in the top 10 things to do in Japan. So we're really uh, happy uh, about that. We've now designed five other projects for Tsutaya uh, around Japan. And uh, as I say, books, books are here to stay. And uh, we hope to be working in this, uh, in this area um, in the near future in China. So uh, we look forward to what we can do there on a cultural level. But here you can see the wonderful books and the wonderful furniture. And again, a place to uh, relax 
and you know have a sense of well-being um, i think that's really important and we tend to forget that we forget we forget in retail environments to let people sit down and take a breath and recharge so many so many buildings don't have chairs don't have furniture everybody's a scared for people to sit down so an extension of that project is open house in bangkok um, this project is seamless. It's seamless from the books, to the restaurant, to the art gallery, to the kids space, to the co-working space. It's an oasis in the heart of Bangkok. Here again, I'm touching on well-being. Um, Bangkok is really hot and humid, and there aren't many places where you can just hang out and uh, take a break. So this is the plan. It's about 4,600 square meters. And we've broken it up with a series of towers. The towers are where the restaurants are. There are 14 restaurants and food outlets uh, within the space. Each is within a tower, each which becomes a totem uh, so you can actually find and navigate through the space. Each of the totems is designed with a different timber pattern. And we have a mirrored ceiling so the towers look even taller. But the towers have a purpose, that's where the kitchen is, it's where the ex extracts are, it's where the hoods are, it's where all the services are. And also we've hidden the columns too uh, within, within these towers. So they serve uh, a multiple of uh, uses. And you can just actually see through them too, so they don't seem too blocky. But again, a seamless space uh, with restaurants, books, um, and cafes and an oasis, as I said, in the heart of Bangkok. We're always playing with pattern and surfaces. It's one of our, one of our things that we love to do. Uh, if we find a white surface, we have to do something, including painting leaves on this, on this, uh, on this ceiling, huge white ceiling. And we have the British Embassy on one side and we have a park on the other. We wanted this canopy to connect the two. I'll maybe talk about that in a second. But again, here you can see there are places to sit down and hang out and uh, read the books. Um, we want you to interact with the books all the time. Um, and it's been a fab fabulous success. So the bookstore or the, is, isn't inside a box. It's like a thread that runs through the building. And it starts with this book tower and then this path meanders through the building. And you can sit and pause in seats and read books. So again, that notion to recharge, think about things, think about getting out your wallet and buying something while you're in the store. No one there is going around with a, with a, with a phone and checking the price on Amazon. They, they really want to support this bookstore and it's fantastically curated. Curation is a key thing too within retail. It's no good just putting books on the shelf. They've got to be lovingly um, curated by somebody that knows a lot about books. And this bookstore has a big Asian theme and uh, the curator here, Shane, does a marvelous job of loving the books. And because he loves the books, people love coming to the bookstore. In the center here on the left-hand side, we have uh, an art, art gallery and they're selling art supplies there too. And within the space, um, we have this co-working area and that is again, seamlessly connected to the bookstore. It's a place you can hang out for a couple of hours do some work in, 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 in peace and quiet, a little bit away um, from the main space. And again, this has been really successful and looks out across uh, towards the British Embassy and lots of green there too. So that's open house. So I'm going to, I think the next thing up is a video here. So um, let me see if I can pull that up. Maybe it will start automatically. Here you go. So I'm going to talk over the top and uh, maybe uh, they will splice in the video on top of this. Who knows? And I'll turn the sound down just a fraction. So yeah, this is um, a drone shot through, through the space. It's not a CG. Um, it's, it's, it's a real. Um, and you can see again how seamlessly this all works. Yeah, it all ties together uh, in one huge 4,600 square meter space. Um, it's really, uh, you know, a place where you can go back many, many times and always discover or eat something di di different there. Really fantastic food. They don't clean that fast, actually, in Thailand. It's just a speeded up video. <laughs> so, 
as you can see, all the different patterns here for the uh, for each of the towers. And you can see here the ceiling too, which we which was hand painted uh, with ten thousand leaves. So, open house in Bangkok again. If you're in Bangkok, please go and check it out. So, as I said, our office is uh, quite a social office. We like being social, and uh, this is Super Deluxe, an art space that we ran in Tokyo for twenty years. It's on a slight pause right now while the building gets rebuilt. Uh, but yeah, we had twenty events a month there, and um, it became a real creative hub in the center of Tokyo. Um, we started Pachacha there, this show and tell format at the dawn of digital photography. Um, we had, you know, digital cameras, projectors, you didn't have to put slides in a carousel. It made it very easy to make presentations. And we had this evening once a month where architects could show and share their work. But you know what architects are like? They talk too much. So we came up with this very simple format of 20 images shown for 20 seconds each, and then the next person was on. And we called it Pachacha the sound of chit chat in Japanese. It's an onomatopoeia, pachakcha, pachakcha, pachakcha. And the rest is history. We've held a pachakcha night in Tokyo every month for over 17 years. It's really popular. And we wondered why it's become so popular. I think one of the reasons is it's a super simple format, a very simple framework of 20 images. So you can have a you know, few slides for your introduction, a few for the main part, and then a few for the end. And it's fast, it's fun, and it's friendly. And um, yeah. That's, that's it, it's super simple. Um, I think the other reason is that there's no video, there's no moving GIFs, just 20 still images with as little text as possible. And that allows you to look, listen, and think to what the person is saying and look at their slides. There's no video, there's no low one, lower one third, there's no moving text like on any news program. You can concentrate on what's being said and what's being shown. And that's what's made it so successful, it's spread all over the world from a one-off event in Tokyo. We're now in 1,235 cities around the world, including Beijing, and we've had some amazing events there too. And we hope to come over soon and have another Pachak tonight with you as soon as we're allowed to travel again. We'd love to see you all. But something happened in April. We were having 100 events a month around the world, and then nothing, everything died away. But we're an in, you know, ingenious team. <laughs> And creativity is what we're all about, including you guys. We're all about being creative. So we moved online to Zoom and we started running events um, on Zoom within two weeks of everything stopping. So we had our first event, we called it Inspire the World. We wanted people to be inspired by designers and inspired by fantastic things that we can do. Positivity always comes out in, in times like this. So on the 15th of April and 16th in Tokyo, Carl Bass, Yves Beha, Chantel Martin, Cameron Sinclair, all made amazing presentations to inspire the world. And it really took off. And all of our other cities around the world thought, hey, we've got great ideas too. And we've held over 100 events you know, during the pandemic with cities all around the world and designers and creative people showing positivity and ingenuity. It's been amazing. And here we have uh, Tachikawa-san, uh, from uh, No Zainer, where he's just taken a simple A4 folder with two cuts. You can turn it into a PPE face mask. Ingenious, fantastic. Um, you can always click on the, uh, well, you can't click, but you can snap the QR code that will take you exactly to his page. He's a graphic designer too, and he's been trying to show in ingenious ways what two meters actually is. So it's the distance between two beetles. It's a tuna length. It's a tatami map. Those things stick in your head really easily. And they're just beautiful graphics. And we really love what he gets up to. And Pachak is about always trying to find these ingenious people and to tell their story succinctly. This is Jude Pullen. Um, yeah, he's got crazy hair, but he's also has crazy ideas. And he's been running this series of lockdown lectures. Uh, because you can't go to school or university, uh, he's at the University of, uh, in, in Aberystwyth. He's been running these amazing lockdown le lectures. And it's been really successful. He's been running them on YouTube. And uh, yeah, from, from nothing, he's suddenly got this uh, fantastic series. Please check him out again. Check that, uh, check that QR code in the corner. As you can see, 20 seconds is quite long, huh? And then we have Mot Morag. And so Mot Morag Myerskoff. Um, she's a fantastic graphic designer and she's stuck in her home. She's just, what does she do? Well, she starts graphicking her house and painting her house. And she's become really well known for doing this. And she started this new trend called London Fabulousness. And uh, here you can see her being fabulous 
on the wall of her apartment or a, a, a home in, uh, in East London. And uh, yeah, she's making a painting um, and saying thanks to all the superheroes in the National Health Service. But really creative, really positive, and that although the pandem pandemic's been really difficult, all of this creativity and joy and love comes from that. And here's Sam Jacob. He's been uh, running this series of um, desktop design academy. So you can go to a design academy on your desktop. And he's been running this on Instagram. It's been really interesting. And he sets a problem each week and people send in pictures and then he, he, he grades them. So here's a really great idea because all the museums are closed or were all closed. Uh, why don't you have a street museum? You put a box outside on your wall or on your fence or on your gatepost and you can exhibit something from inside your house. So the street museum, I love that idea. We should do it, again, all these things we should do all the time anyway. So um, Pachacha has also evolved uh, because of the pandemic, we can't travel. So now you can make Pachacha presentations online yourself with Pachacha Create, you upload 20 images, you voice them and share them. And this has been super successful. Over 5,000 people make presentations a month at the moment, and we're gonna expand, uh, that's gonna expand exponentially as things go wild. This has also allowed us, uh, our Pachacha Create, to run competitions. And we're doing this amazing competition uh, with uh, World Architecture Festival. And the uh, chief judge is uh, Lord Norman Foster. So we're super happy about that. So I think that's a Pachacha presentation. That's my 19th slide. Please check it out. Please enter the competition. You've got uh, until the 18th of September. So thank you, Beijing. And uh, I hope you have a really, really great design week. And uh, we hope to be with you there next year. Um, we're having our design week uh, from the 23rd of October until the uh, 3rd of November, but I don't think we'll be traveling backwards and forwards yet. So we'll see you all next year. Have a great, great design week. Bye from Tokyo.